What's up everybody? I am Impending Duff. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, real quick, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any other quick tips. I release these every single week on Wednesdays, maybe Thursdays, depending on how busy I am during the week. But if you're new to the series, I recorded these videos a year ago. They've been exclusive to my Patreon for the past year. And now that that year is gone, I figure it's time to kind of release them to the world. So for what it's worth, some of these kind of earlier ones are a little shaky as far as, uh, I guess, detail goes for, for cinematography purposes, whatever the word is. But I think the information is really good. This is kind of my first long form one. And they did in, evolve into more of a longer kind of video type thing. I try to keep them under 20 minutes, but I think the information within them is really useful. So this one is on kind of my version of Beaten in Leather, and it's been one of my more popular kind of returned back to quick tips on my Patreon. A lot of people join the Patreon to check this tip out, utilize it, and then uh, reference back to it many times over. So I'm quite proud of this one, even though it is kind of raw and for lack of better terms, uncut, but uh, I'm going to let you guys check out the video here, and I hope to see your results on social media somewhere. You know, Tag me if you try it out or uh, share it in the Discord. Remember, as always, all my links are down below. You can check out my Patreon, check me out on Twitch three days a week, or subscribe to this channel and wait for more content. Thanks so much, gang. Enjoy the video. All right, gang. Um... I'm gonna do something a little different today. I'm gonna do a quick, I guess not quick, but kind of quick workup of basically beaten or textured leather. <clears throat> I started, if you saw last week's quick tip, this was all brushed. This is not uh, airbrushed at all. So this is the advantage of properly thinning your paints. I started with Monuments Dark Umber as the base tone. Now I'm going to do like a, a hybrid stipple and dry brush with some light umber to kind of pick out the raised areas. I, I've still got a considerable amount of paint on the brush yet because I'm going to come in here and I'm going to, I'm stippling, right? I'm stippling most of these raised edges, but I don't want to go too overboard. I want to make sure that the recesses remain still kind of shadowy, right? But I want to build up some of this. so. I'm kind of like angling the brush a bit to stay out of those recesses and just kind of get in there and work your magic with the stippling but at the same time you, you shouldn't feel afraid to kind of go back and forth there's a little too much paint on the brush to actually straight up dry brush right now but I'm gonna be generous with this okay um, don't worry about doing too much because we're going to do a lot of different textures on this real quick. But I'm going to go ahead and do this up. And this is going to actually be one of the first edited quick tips. So you get the idea. We're going to cover this whole part, right? And I'll catch up with you when I'm done with it, okay? But keep stippling away. Get some nice texture. And... Try to remain out of those recesses, just like I'm doing here, okay? All right, so here we go. This is after stippling and a slight dry brush. I did take the brush, and once all the paint is essentially removed, I mean, there's next to no paint on this brush, just barely any. I did sweep across it a little bit just to kind of soften things up a little bit. So there is a slight dry brush to this. There's the detail we're looking for. Your recesses are still nice and deep. There's going to be a couple of layers going on here. Okay? But pay attention to that first layer there. That's Pro Acryl Light Umber. You can use any medium brown. Works just fine. Alright, so let me mix up the next color and we'll get started in a second. Alright, so I kind of wanted to show this. Now I'm using Golden Brown and light umber. I've loaded up my brush. I haven't removed anything, but I've loaded up my brush with the golden brown. And I've also taken a small, small dab of that light umber. 
and I'm gonna let the mix happen right here on the paper towel okay see it kind of darkening up a little bit that's what I want okay now I'm not again I'm not looking to remove a crap load of paint here I still want this to be nice and wet so when I take it to the model here I'll get some nice lighter details here now I am gonna kinda focus more towards the raised edges as opposed to getting really crazy with it like I did the last texture and I might have left a little too much paint off the brush for this but you get the the point here we're gonna stick around the edges really kinda work this in stippling getting really just the raised edges I don't want to get too deep into any of these recesses we can get into a little bit further detail later on once this is complete but essentially I just want to stipple in these raised edges alright so you can see that dry brush layer of the golden brown um, again tighter onto the raised edges maybe a little less into the recesses if you will stronger on the really sharp edges but fading out um, a little more focus on some of the flatter areas that dip out now we're going to start adding some of those superficial scratches and dings and nicks and whatnot so you want to get yourself a really sharp brush for this thin your paint down not necessarily to a glaze but considerably thin I mean you can see how thin I am right pretty thin um, then I kind of treat it like a glaze I moisten a, a paper towel and I load up my brush and I just dab off the excess but I don't go full on like I'm glazing I just dab the extra and then as fine as we can possibly do I'm just gonna add in some of these superficial scratches if you will kind of really light brush strokes right maybe he has like a little scratch there and maybe something here maybe it's got a little bit of a trail scratch there you know keep them real light and thin if you can't pull a very thin line make sure that uh, you take some time to practice the other thing is you're gonna want to kind of pay attention to not paying attention if you have a bunch of the same type of scratches everywhere it's gonna look a little off and goofy right so kinda try your mind's gonna look for patterns and subconsciously add these patterns uh, same length same direction etc so do everything you can to kind of break away from adding those similarities if you will you know if I I have one where I keep working these and I've got a scratch that goes here and it's you know that long and then I come over here and I've got the same direction over here um, or same size I should, should say like you know like that it's not that bad but once you start bunching up a bunch of them it starts looking really suspect so just take your time really get your your brush controlled down and add these scratches in I like to focus on areas that are going to get caught up more so like edges bottoms situations like that where you know this area is gonna really get dinged up right just really work on your brush pressure this is gonna help you in so many ways just to be able to really kind of understand the control of the pressure of your brush and the thinning of your paints properly thinning your paints properly moistening your brush you know these are things that we've talked about on stream or talked about in other quick tips that we're now combining for a multitude uh, a conglomeration effect if you will so I'm gonna go ahead and do some more uh, superficial scratches in this tone and then we're gonna move on to the next step so <clears throat> I've added the, all the superficial scratches in this color now we're gonna add a final bright highlight to this before we go and of course glaze it all back into a more consistent leather tone 
this is fine as it is. I mean, you could go with this, but I like to make everything kind of smooth out and get together in one little hot tub, one little party. Now I'm working in olive flesh. You can substitute ivory. I wouldn't go bright ivory for this, but uh, substituting ivory is fine. I've got it, again, thinned down considerably. Um, I'm using Lamian. You can use water for this. A little bit of chalkiness isn't going to bother anything, but uh, you couldn't see how I thin that. There it is. There's your thinness, right? And again, just kind of dab the extra, excess moisture. We're not full-on dabbing off like we're glazing, but now I want to keep this kind of beaten up and not consistent, so you can use the side of your brush for some of this. But more of these raised areas are where I'm going to kind of work in some of this highlight, right? And I'm going to keep it really kind of broken up, if you will, right? I'm not going to really go ham on this. We're just going to hit some of these highest areas and keep it very broken up, like I said. It's okay if you do something a little weird, you know, get a little messy with it, that's fine. We like texture for this, okay? Texture is our friend. So you'll notice I'm kind of using the side of my brush as well as comboing in with the very tip. Um, just the tip? I don't know. But anyway, I'm working it up here, kind of doing my thing. We're not relying on the dry brush right now. So obviously, just kind of go ham. I've done this a few times so I, I have a control that I know. So I'm going to just tell you guys don't be afraid to take your time and uh, kind of work your way up to only the brightest highlights. Don't really need too much up in here. Maybe just a little dabby dabbies here and there. There's no real rhyme or reason and you'll see because it's so thin it does kind of blend back in with the undertone so I'm not super scared to kind of have fun with this and see where it goes right so that's essentially where I'm going with this um, I might kind of work this highlight up a little brighter where I started down here then I start I let it dry and then I start up here and then I let it dry and start up here kind of build a gradient into the brighter olive flesh at the highest peaks right so now I'm just kind of building up a little bit here kind of just adding some texture here and there the idea is to basically get a little uh, wacky with it and of course with the lighter color I'm gonna also add in a superficial scratch or two I'm not gonna go as crazy as the last color but I do want to add in some some crazy cuts and nicks into the cloak as well you know there's going to be brighter scratches there's going to be more prolific scratches you know it's it's up to you it's your piece so get in there make something happen make some fun and uh, we'll see you back in a minute when I'm done doing this stage so there is all your highlights all your superficial scratches all your deeper scratches etc I just want you to point or kind of pay attention to how this cloak goes. This is a very sharp point here. This is a very sharp point here. I've kind of feathered it out in a radius in a sense. And then of course I've really highlighted up here where that light's going to catch over here and on this point as well. Where I've more or less been subtle on these smaller folds back here and here. I'm not looking to go overboard. These different colors of superficial scratches, maybe you can't see some of them, but like right here is that really, um, what is that, golden yellow here. But then I've got a few of these tan flesh, or olive flesh, I'm sorry, kind of scratches overlapping those. That's great. Add in some little, little textures here and there. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. You can come in here and you can stipple in a dot or two here or there. That's okay. There's going to be little pits and little nicks and you name it. There's going to be all this little texture here and there, here and there, you know. So don't be afraid. 
your thin paints will really help kind of um, make this effect subtle. So work on thinning your paints, work on brush pressure. Alright, I'm going to let this cure a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll get this all put together. So, the final step is going to be a glaze to bring this all together. Um, you can use transparent brown from Procro. I feel it's a little too red to be a true brown. So, in order to kind of darken it up and bring it a little warmer towards, say, like the orangey brown, I just add in a little bit of yellow. So, I'm, I'm doing four parts transparent black to about one and a half to two parts yellow and one part transparent black. And essentially, what I end up with is this color. So, we're looking at more of a true, true brown here. Okay, that yellow and black is going to really turn it that leathery brown color. Now here is, here is the uh, transparent brown on its own and you can see how red it is compared to what I've created. And again, it's okay. You can use that if that's what you like and that's what you're going for. I'm going for more of a uh, beaten down tanned hide. So this red color is not really going to lend itself to me. So if you haven't glazed before, <clears throat> I like to just moisten a, a wet paper towel. You can watch the Vince Venturella video on glazing. That's essentially my style of glazing. I make a glaze out of uh, that transparent. It's somewhat pigment rich. I go ahead and dab off my moisture. And this is where the magic's going to happen, kids. Of course, we're going to pull all of that into the recesses. And this may or may not take more than one coat. Sometimes it takes me two or three. But the idea here is to glaze all of this back down so that it all gets married into one kind of final effect if you will <clears throat> and I'll go ahead and I'll do this whole cloak real quick but I like to pull the pooling product the pooling glaze into the deeper recesses just to kind of help reinforce some of those shadows uh, you shouldn't have really lost many shadows <clears throat> but pulling that glaze deeper into them is really going to kind of promote them a little more. And as we go through this layer, you should see things kind of coming together and becoming a beaten up and scroggy leather. Go ahead and even this out a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to let this layer dry. And I'll come back to you. So here it is after one glazing. And it's pretty legit right now. It's good. But if you want to take it past that kind of bomber jacket look, that cracked leather bomber jacket look, and you want to blend it together a little more, maybe darken it up a bit, you know what to do. We add a second layer. And now I'm going to focus a little more on bringing those glazes into the shadows as opposed to letting them kind of be more of an all over type thing. I'm really going to focus on pulling them in. And I'm just going to hit this edge kind of abruptly there. But pulling all this together, making things happy, pulling this down into the shadow, that's what we're looking to do. There you have it. That's after two layers of glaze to kind of bring it together. I did get a little bit of a pooling issue right there. That's okay. It's not a huge deal. You can work that out with another layer of glaze, kind of softening it out. But I'm not too worried about it because I am going to show you guys in another quick tip some other time how to kind of weather this out further and, and improve down in the shadows a bit more. But as you can see, all the superficial scratches are shining through. But that glaze really kind of marries it all together, marries all the layers together and makes it really look like beaten in leather. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick tip. 
This is the last one for September. I'm loving doing these, and I really cannot tell you all how much I seriously appreciate your support and your love in this whole endeavor. Thank you all so freaking much. I'll see you guys in October. Take care. Little horns.